Open up. Da, 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 da. I, I really have a friend from uh, from Arezzo, which is uh, the, the south of Tuscany. It's uh, it's closer to Umbria. He will always say da, da, da. Okay, so depending where you go in Tuscany, they'll say it everywhere, but sometimes it's really da. So in this case, she's saying, oh, come on. So it's really da. Don't be da. It's not the da of, uh, I don't know, of some areas where you are formally asking the god of love to, I don't know what. You're telling your boyfriend, oh, give me a break. Da, se piacere mi vuoi. Too much of a wet blanket for your taste. Scolaratura must remind, you know, the, the fast typing of the secretaries in the American movies of the 50s, you know. This is, audio has to be a... You need to be able to hear the, the ticking of your typing fingers on the keyboard. You don't get lost in the melody. You know the melody. You need to know it exactly. You're not reading it, are you? You know it, do you? Yeah, yeah. Why it sounds too low. Because Mozart knew what he was doing when giving a, a low A to a soprano. If you start judging it, oh, it's too low, you will start overloading it. You will start overcompensating out of frustration of not be good enough to sing that low. But that's your problem, not Mozart's. So it's really da, da, oh, stop it. And the interval is composed by an octave plus something. And you know that because you sing contemporary music. A lot of intervals in contemporary music are basic intervals plus either an octave or a semitone or a triton. If you simplify contemporary music and you eliminate octaves from very weird intervals, if you subtract a triton or a semitone or an octave, you will always end up with a fourth or a fifth or something like that, with a very simple uh, interval. And this is the case. So first of all, think of the phrase as... Okay. You know, when, when mothers get angry at their kids, you're not really expecting to go on the higher octave. It's just a sudden bout of energy. What you really, what you thought you meant was, but then you are so mad and exasperated that you will go, you know, you have two ways to do that. Either you take advantage of the consonant grip of the nka, nka, and you maximize it in order, uh, and, and you kind of linger on it. You procrastinate the actual note while you gather the appoggio you need for the high G. No, Miss Nka, no, Miss Nka. Or you go the opposite way and you put a schwa in between the N and the K. And you will go, no, Mr. Ah! Something like that. In any case, try in your speaking mind to completely ignore the octave. Think of the third. Mi, mm -hmm. sol. Not of the eleventh. Minimize that A of stankar. Even in the phrase before, no, mi stankar. You can minimize it to a schwa. And you can do it here as well. No, mi stankar. And here as well. Even more, it, it gives more the idea if you grind it in your teeth. But anyway, it's not a tenth, it's a third. It's really just a... Rehearse it like that. And then just for a second, you've lost it. Okay? I told you. I told you. Really mm -hmm. gives the idea of a mom scolding a kid. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Do the doctor rhythm he gives you. <laughs> this is perfect. Still and uh, burnt out. <laughs> Closer to Anna. No, no, you really have to keep still with your body. You don't have to frown, you don't have to do anything. Manage to have a secure 
tray like a waiter on the appoggio and whatever is laid on that tray it doesn't have to move it adjusts the counterweight adjusts immediately okay more and more and more exasperated you have to be perfectly still solid in your appoggio perfectly relaxed in your face mola still even more exasperated can you spell the uh, 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 in the tempo in your mind without the the pitch La, uh, 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 uh. this is what it has to sound like in your mind look ahead bravissima this is it yeah this is much cleaner and then you when you're when you get familiar with it you just ha add a touch of hysteria but just a touch of hysteria to it the E is not tied. Be precise, but not um, scolastico, si dice in italiano. Like, you know, like, like, a, like a school child that repeats the correct lesson word by word. So don't be yeah. scolastica. Be, uh, be meaningful, be deliberate, but somehow also theatrical. Impegna ser bar fede, ser bar fede, ser bar fede. It's really solemn, okay? Mm -hmm. Solemn, okay. not uh, just precise. Impegna ser bar fede. Okay. There is less vocal impedance if you do. You really need the double L. I'm telling you, you are calling it to yourself. Uh, 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 Much better, much better letter. And when and, and again, when you feel like you got this, let go of your lips. Stop doing it with your face. Just think of it; it'll come out. Coloratura mm -hmm. must remind you know the the fast typing of the secretaries in the American movies of the fifties. You know, this is audio has to be a ah. You need to be able to hear the the tick of your typing fingers on the keyboard you don't get lost in the melody you know the melody you need to know it exactly you're not reading it are you you know it do you yeah yeah I trust that you do so all you have to mind now is and as they did you know can you imagine doing something so precise and moving around no they were perfectly still it was just their fingers like classical pianists somehow so just focus on that action. Do this coloratura again. so hard just to be if you are really focused on remembering with your eidetic memory what the notes are you'll just go ah, ah, ah. it has to be just here do it one more time no, no, no.
Look at me. It has to be pure geometry. In order to see the coloratura, everything else must be still. If I want to clearly see a pattern, mm -hmm. I don't put it against another pattern. I put it on a, you know, I put something clean underneath mm -hmm. it. So it's pure geometry. It's for the ear. It's, it was the psychedelia of the time, I want to say. It's very square in a way. Almost like Baroque music. Or this is Baroque uh, music. And, this is meant to be Baroque music. Being Mozart, I was thinking and perhaps I need to be more legato. It has That's to what? be legato, but it has to be precise. And Mozart has a clear way, unmistakable way to recall the uh and he does it with the noble characters he gives this type of coloratura to the ancien regime characters in it they're less lifelike they're less spoken they're always very coloratura like fiordilisi like dorabella this is an exact quote of baroque even if it's mozart it's abstract not, not painting so legato as in... what's the difference between very legato and not so legato can i hear it because I'm not sure what you mean. This is not the kind of coloratura um, as in uh, Bellini. But give me a practical example. Like this oh. to me is Mozart's coloratura and this is the way I would sing it if it was, I don't know, Handel. Uh, this to me sounds more like Handel. but uh, It has to sound more like Handel. <laughs> also because, you know, it's ancient Rome. There is also some sort of characterization of the... Of the placement of the piece of the environment of the you know this is not modern times when he wrote uh, the nazi he was talking about characters that were his contemporaries this is stuff that happened in in ancient rome at the times of julius caesar you see what i mean okay and this da, da, ba, 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 ba. it's very baroque it's very handelian so in order to characterize the the you know the character, the time of the character, he is somehow quoting another epoch, especially if you consider that this is his last work. Oh, okay. You didn't know that? This is Mozart's last opera. Oh, I'm very surprised. Very written surprised. the year that he died. This is like Quentin Tarantino quoting Sergio Leone in his movies, quoting the... The, 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 the Italian film from the 60s and, and 70s, you know, this is a deliberate quote of another style due to an intention to characterize the, uh, the ambientation. I don't know even, even in this, that's a word in English, but you see why it sounds too low. Because Mozart knew what he was doing when giving a, a low A to a soprano. <laughs> If you start judging it, oh, it's too low, you will start overloading it. You will start overcompensating out of frustration of not be good enough to sing that low. But that's your problem, not Mozart's. Yeah, Mozart wanted to obtain that kind of effect. It's neither low or high or nothing. It's the way it is. So what kind of effect did he want? Let's keep it simple. You use that note when you speak in daily life, all the time, you have it. It will probably sound less loud than the rest of your register. And that is probably why he wrote it that way. Oh my God. You can breathe through it, make it almost delirious. You can do everything you want with it, but not judge it as it's too low. That too is the problem. <laughs> elegant. Don't don't deprive it of its elegant of the elegance you give to the rest of your speech just because it's low. You know it's low. That's <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> Vego, vego la morte. Say it. Vego la morte. Vego la morte. No. Vego la morte. Vego la morte. It's not vego. It's vego la morte. Vego la morte. Right. Oh my God. Vego la morte. Say it. Mean it. Vego la morte. 
You are still speaking it regola morte for some reason, and you don't speak like that when you speak Italian. I promise. Mm -hmm. Vigola morte, vigola morte, vigola morte, varme avanzar. Vai, elegante, semplice. <laughs> vigola morte, varme avanzar. Molto meglio. Do not be willing to make it loud. You don't have to prove that you have those notes. Actually, it will be more uh, artsy if it's quite whispered and breath through. Keep it vego. Vego la morte. Ah, I mean, if you will really look at death in the eyes, you are trembling with fear. And that's what he meant. Oh my god. Okay. It'll be even more juicy.